Well, there's organised labour as well, and there's political labour. And there's parliament, <coughs> and there's extra parliamentary activities there, and there is industrial labour. But equally important to understand labour, there is capital. And it's not possible to understand the place of labour in our society unless we also understand the needs of capital. Marx wrote a book called Capital, not a book called Labour. There's a great deal in Capital about labour and how it is treated, particularly about labour time and the control of the working day. But unless we understand what the needs of capital are, we will not understand the struggles and the sufferings of labour. So it's a class struggle between labour and capital that we're really concerned about when we talk about labour history. We can think about this in relation to some recent events. Why was it that capital needed work choices? Some of the people who opposed it were saying, oh, but just because Howard was a nasty man. Well, of course Howard was a nasty man. But that's not why we got work choices. Some people said it was ideological. Well, everything's ideological. There's an ideological dimension to everything. But capitalists don't live off ideas. They live off the domination and the discipline of labour time. And the destruction of organised labour in the working place is the single most important need that capital has because it makes it easier for them to extract more value from their workers. And if there's no one there to say, no, you can't do this to us, that's what they want. So it was a plan not to weaken the unions, but to destroy them. And if we don't understand that, we then don't understand why we ended up with work choices light in unfair Australia, unfair work Australia bill. So we need to look at capital as well in all of that.